Now I'm going to explain the difference between Kathleen M. Beck, the attorney for Dr. Holland's estate, and Preston J. Douglas. Kathleen M. Beck thinks and acts like a winner, and Preston J. Douglas thinks and acts like a loser. It is that simple. Kathleen M. Beck had no compunction whatsoever about pretending that Dr. Holland's falsified advice CT scan document was real, that he actually did advise the test, and therefore it was Phyllis's fault for not having it done. She took a highly incriminating piece of evidence against her client, twisted it around, threw it right back at Preston J. Douglas, and then blamed it on the patient who was the actual victim in this case. You see, this is a real attorney at work. She is wholly dedicated to her client's position. You can rest assured she read the medical records and knew exactly what Dr. Holland was up to because this lady knows her job. She's not interested in cutting corners and nickel and diamond cases to death the way Preston J. Douglas is. She's interested in one thing only, winning the case and she will do whatever she has to do to win it. This is in direct opposition to Preston J. Douglas who thinks like a total loser. All Preston J. Douglas ever did throughout this entire case was look at dates. He looked at dates and he ignored facts. Well, there is no way anybody can possibly know if there is a statute of limitations problem in a medical malpractice case just by looking at the date of surgery or the date of last appointment, but that's exactly what Preston J. Douglas thought he could do, and as you can see, the results are disastrous. Not only did he just look at dates, he just completely ignored the medical records in their entirety. Not only didn't he read them, but he just ignored them. I mean, his legal arguments are a complete farce. They're just a contrived piece of nonsense that he concocted at the absolute last minute. Preston J. Douglas had 26 months to prepare this case. He started working on it in January 1989, and he submitted his legal arguments in March 1991. That is 26 months. He had plenty of time to properly prepare this case, but he essentially did absolutely nothing during that entire period of time. All he did was contact his unnecessary expert witness, provide him with incomplete medical records, and come to the completely wrong conclusion about it. He then waited to the absolute last minute to write his legal arguments. His legal arguments weren't written until after the motion for summary dismissal was filed. So that was pending in the court. So now after doing nothing for all that time, now all of a sudden he was in a big rush to get his legal arguments out the door, because if you don't get your legal arguments into the court within a certain period of time, the case can be dismissed based upon that alone. So now all of a sudden, you know, after doing nothing, he has to rush to get his legal arguments. And when you're in a rush, you are going to make mistakes. And that's exactly what his legal arguments are in this case. They are one huge mistake. They demonstrate absolute and total lack of knowledge of the medical facts of this case. Preston J. Douglas' entire assessment of this case is 100% wrong. He didn't get anything right. First, he claims Dr. Holland repaired two aneurysms using two different methods, when in fact his operation is a time bomb, and even based upon the information Mr. Douglas knew at the time, it was obvious it was a time bomb, but he just ignored all that. He completely ignored what Dr. Rupian had to say. You know, you would think that when the client walks in the door, and this is a case that had been pending for three and a half years already, so, you know, the client pretty much handed the entire case over to the attorney. I handed Mr. Douglas all the medical records that were known, which was everything except the consultant report, and I explained to him exactly what Dr. Harupian said, that the operation creates a single giant bearing aneurysm years later, and when you combine that with the fact that Dr. Allen lied to Phyllis for all those years, the question is, what, why would he even be concealing the aneurysm, you know, unless he's up to no good? When I mentioned this to Preston J. Douglas, he kind of looked at me funny, and that was the last we ever heard with it. Obviously, Dr. Rupian should have been deposed. I mean, clearly the neuropathologist is a critical uh, witness in a case like this. Uh, but Preston J. Douglas didn't bother to give him a call to discuss the weather. He didn't depose him. He didn't even use the autopsy report as evidence, which is absolutely unbelievable. And here's another interesting little uh, side fact. When Fuchsberg and Fuchsberg originally had the case in March of 1984, they were going to arrange to have a neuropathologist that they knew determine the cause of death. Well, if that had happened, you can rest assured that Mr. Douglas would have spoken to the neuropathologist to discuss the autopsy results. So what happened between January, I'm sorry, between March 1984 and January 1989, almost five years, where Preston J. Douglas went from, it's critical that we have a neuropathologist determined 
uh, the cause of death to the neuropathologist is a completely useless witness. We don't have to bother to depose him, call him, or use his autopsy report. Well, the only thing I can think of is that uh, over time, most people become more skillful in their profession. It appears that the exact opposite happened to Preston J. Douglas. He apparently went into retrograde mode. He went from seemingly knowing what needed to be done in March of 1984 to not having a clue as to what needed to be done in January 1989. I also suspect that his business methodology of nickel and diamond cases to death and cutting corners became fully ingrained in him during that almost five year period. Now, in regard to the falsified advice CT scan document, you don't just walk into your doctor's office and he says, listen, I want you to run out to the nearest hospital or diagnostic facility and have a CT scan done and then report back. I mean, what is missing from this equation? A referral for the test. There is no referral. And there's no referral because Dr. Holland uh, never, uh, never uh, advised any such test. So the notion that because Dr. Holland made a notation in a falsified document yet that says advise CT scan means that the patient is supposed to run out and have a CT scan done based on that is totally ridiculous. Uh, I, I mean, a competent attorney, plaintiff's attorney, would have ripped her apart in his legal arguments regarding that. I mean, she's completely relying on a falsified document. Oh, Phil should have had the CT scan done because advise CT scan is written in a falsified document. Of course, she's presenting it as if it's a real document, when in fact it's a falsified document. What does Preston J. Douglas have to say about the fact there's no referral? He doesn't even mention it at all, period. Uh, I mean, and, and you know what else he does? When an attorney blatantly misrepresents a document in a legal proceeding, the way Kathleen M. Beck did, I mean, she had both documents. She had the original uh, that was sent to me on March 18th from Dr. Holland's secretary that does not say advise CT scan, and she had the one from the life insurance company that was filed almost a year and a half later that does say uh, uh, advise CT scan. And she chose the one with the advise CT scan that was clearly the falsified one sent to the insurance company. And uh, she presented that as if that was the actual document. Well, that is a potential ethics violation because attorneys are not supposed to be engaging in that type of fraudulent misrepresentation of documents. A real plaintiff's attorney would have ripped her apart pointed out to the judge clearly exactly what she was up to and even reported her to the New York Bar, uh, New York State Bar Association for doing this. But what does Preston J. Douglas have to say about her engaging in this type of uh, fraudulent activity to the court? He claims she is merely misguided for relying on the document. Yes, she is just misguided. As I put one over on the judge, which he successfully, of course, accomplished, she is just misguided. I mean, this is just another example of how Preston J. Douglas is just a weak advocate. I, I mean, this attorney is like, you know, he, he's afraid to, to confront anybody. Uh, I mean, throughout this entire case, he doesn't use the words fraud, malice, or lie a single time, even though it's written all over these medical records. Uh, I've got to bet you should offend somebody, and who would he be offending? He'd be offending the estate of a deceased doctor, and he still can't get himself to use any of those terms. He can't even get himself to use the term falsified medical record. He refers to Dr. Holland's falsified advice CT scan document as an altered photostat. That is such an off-the-wall description of it, it boggles the mind that anybody would even think of calling it that. I mean, an average person would look at the two documents. The original doesn't say advise CT scan. The one sent to the insurance company does. Well, obviously, Dr. Holland falsified his medical records to say he advised a CT scan at Phyllis's last appointment, but not according to Preston J. Douglas. It's an altered photostat. Not only that, he offers no explanation as how the document had even been, been created. Uh, as I mentioned in the Dr. Holland video, Dr. Holland had to have Xeroxed the original, wrote an advise CT scan on that copy, Xeroxed it again, and sent it off to the life insurance company. A highly deliberate, fraudulent, malicious act for sure, yet Preston J. Douglas makes no mention of this whatsoever. So now the judge has to scratch his head and try and figure out what the heck is, a, is an altered photo stat. Well, you can't expect the judge to figure anything out. That's ridiculous. You have to explain every specific detail in the legal argument. Not only that, it's not even an altered photo stat. Uh, 
Uh, Preston J. Douglas can't even get his own, his own distorted definition of it right. As I mentioned, Doc Down had to have Xerox as original, wrote an advice CT scan on the copy. That's the altered photo step, but that isn't what Doc, uh, what, uh, Doc Town sent off to the insurance company. He had to have Xeroxed it again and then sent it off, because if he didn't, they would have seen that part of the document was a copy and part was a written in ink. So technically, it's a photostat of an altered photostat. In any event, that is just such an off-the-wall description. I mean, th as far as I can tell, Preston J. Douglas' analytical capabilities are completely dysfunctional. I mean, first he takes Dr. Holland lying to Phyllis, telling her in writing it that she has one aneurysm, but we know she has two, easily proven, submit the patient consent form, submit Dr. Holland's operative report, and of course Phyllis's parents should have been deposed, and they would have confirmed the, you know, what they signed in writing. Uh, and instead of doing that, he twisted that around into her husband finding out later on that she had two aneurysms prepared using two different methods. I mean, again, that is complete dysfunction. I don't think you could find a defense attorney that could look at those medical records and come up with an explanation like that. That is a Preston J. Douglas special. And the fact that he felt he had to rewrite critical facts like that, you know, to make it look like it sounded like ordinary negligence is a sign of extreme weakness, total incompetence, and a clear-cut indication that not only is he defendant biased, but he is a non-confrontational litigator. A non-confrontational litigator is useless and serves no purpose whatsoever other than to trash cases as was done in the Dr. Holland case. The entire purpose of being a litigator is to confront the opposition head on. Preston Day Douglas does anything but confront the opposition. All he does is twist facts around, make excuses on behalf of Dr. Holland and his associates. He even makes excuses on behalf of uh, Dr. Holland's attorney. I mean, this is the way real attorneys operate, that's for sure. 